I'll just put my bottle opener away. Out there, it's great. All right. Oh, man. Twist offs just don't have the ring to them. Yeah, I know, but Side well, Boys is a good one. You know, one. there's something that just never, uh, like, it never fails. You guys know what that is. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. That's um, the sound of me cracking open a can of bubbly water. Let's see, what do you sip, man? I still got that blowing rock. I bought the last few. Oh. What am I drinking now? Uh, I got a palate cleanser, Last Caress, from the uh, New Anthem Brewery. This is really cool. Shout out to uh, our guy Fish. Uh, came and shared one of these down at the shop with uh, Josh and myself. We got into a little early tasting with this, so I happen to know I like this. I like this beer. Oh, I know it's hazy, but... Oh, we like... also had one of the best discussions I've had in recent years, aside from I'm anyone, just... I'm... aside from just talking with you about, like, bands I'm... and music. I so. Yeah, so this is a... The, the guy, Danzig, but yeah. not the band Danzig. This is from... No, no, so it's the Misfits. Yeah, it's from yeah, the Misfits. We've got Matthew joining us. Uh, Matthew, Matthew, what's up? Matthew, COVID's not uh, kicking your butt too much. Hope you're get, doing better. Yeah, man. Hey. We'll, we'll put on a mask for Matt. Um, <laughs> yeah, he he had to hang home. He's uh, um, oh, yeah. and then Brittany says Nick takes me into grabbing the last last CDL, so that's what I will be drinking. Talked, oh, talked. talked okay. Are you right. feeling good about this decision, Brittany? Yeah. <laughs> talk not takes. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Brittany, Nick I, takes a lot of things. So. I could come over and take him off your hands. I right out the fridge if you need. All right. I take so, it for granted. So. Yeah, I've got the Peach County from Cider Boys, which I totally put in the system as Peach Country because I, I thought that's what it said. I keep, yeah, I keep trying to type in Cider Boys to look for it, and then I like decide I'm going for Peach, and then, yeah, it gets fun from there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can still find it. We live in Peach Country, though, so... Why not? All right. I'm, I'm from Pe- I'm from Georgia. Are we still on, guys? Well, like, ri- like, Richland? Or like nor like Augusta. No, well, just Georgia. I mean, peaches are on the license plate. I think we just got cut off. What, what's North Augusta? That's South Carolina, right? Yes. What's West Augusta? It doesn't exist. It's where West, James Brown from. West Augusta. Oh, that's on the other side of the tracks. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, I never went there as a kid. Uh, Augusta National, the club, is that like... In the city, or do you have to like? It's kind of like just outside. I'm still here. Okay, all right. So, so we're just here. Just out I just of don't downtown. Know where we are on the Facebook feed. Um, My hopefully, I can find it here. Yeah. Um, no, I mean Augusta National. All right. All right. Let's see. It looks like we're live. Yeah, we're live. I'm, okay. I mean, the security of that golf course is kind of akin to a military base. <laughs> I, I grew up by so, a few like. Really nice golf courses, but nothing like. Hey, so Nick, while we are or maybe one, uh, yeah. trying to figure all this Facebook stuff out that keeps moving me to other places, but apparently not disconnecting me. Um, why don't you tell our everybody what what you had for dinner? Oh, because that was a topic of discussion earlier. I did. I brought it up. You didn't s- know it, but it was a topic of discussion. I brought it up several times. Uh, it was. It started off with just seeing some crab legs. Uh, in the freezer I just had to go for. So, bowled them up, my usual thing. Steamed them, technically, in a double drop. And, Wait a uh, minute. What was A? <laughs> he just keeps no, hitting a, music. a is the background music. This is why you need the headphones on. Oh. Am I getting played? Sorry, the band is great tonight, though. By yeah. So, did God you get knows, the applause? God knows what sounds sad, sad, sad trombone. I was, I was just trying to see what... Well, and it was a blackened hey, ahi uh, tuna point, steak. I over think it's a safe fettuccine bet. Alfredo with crab leg. Dude, that's I mean, it smelled amazing. It yeah, real. it did. It, <laughs> it was the real deal. You should have seen how fast my brother ate it last night. I uh, I ate <clears throat> far too many olives. Uh, Italian oh. aglio olives, and garlic olives. Oh, most of the garlic is out of my system. Can you so still I'm happy. smell and taste, Matt? Well, not. Can anybody smell and taste Matt? But Matt, can you still smell and taste? You're confusing me with Matt now? No, I'm reading his... He's saying, uh, I've been doing all right. Oh, Rob's the on only a thing that hurts multi-platform. My throat from uh, all the coughing, but no major issues. Okay. Well, sounds, you know... 
I just was wondering if he could still smell and taste. I thought you were confusing me for Matt after eating so much garlic flavored olive. Taste and see, no. I guess. Yeah. Taste and see. So while we're waiting for all that response, <laughs> what are you drinking? Oh, so I'm drinking the Blood Amulet from Bee Nectar. Um, really like Bee Nectar. They're oh yeah, they're very uh, nice, flavorful, different ciders. It's tasty stuff. Bee Nectar really has uh, gained some popularity, some movement in the shop. What really. do you got over there, Nick? Uh, that's the last caress I was bragging about. Oh, uh, that's right. You're talking about with uh, with fish. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We really enjoyed having that brew with that guy, uh, and I'm enjoying this brew again tonight. It's really gives me a nice backbone there. Did you uh, tell everybody what you're having? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. you, oh, you got to get your mind in the game. Well, dude. in that case, he's busy talking to his online friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to chat up our, our you know, <laughs> viewers. In that case. Uh, why don't we... He can still smell and taste, by the way. That's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's, that's good. That's good. That's uh, good. Who wants to start this party yeah, why, off? Why don't uh, you guys decide? Obviously, I have a we, red wine this evening. We are it's definitely on prob- one end of the spectrum. It's probably going to... Probably me? Um, I don't know. My Yours has like... Oh, I thought you had the other guy. No. Okay. I'm excited about trying that. You, you think, okay. I mean, this I think, is just simple and sweet, right? It's not the... Well, it's also super boozy. Yeah, there is that. Well, you guys, it's all up to you. We're going to start with mine. A little, a little something nice to... Edmunds Oast Brewing Great Company. Brewery. Which, uh, Oast is something to do with, like, what, a ship? I, I, I was so confused because... I kept thinking it said oats, mm-hmm. and then I was like, "Oh, it's a coastal. Br- it's Charleston. It's coast." And I was like, "No, this is a typo." But Edmonds Oast, I think it is something to do <clears throat> with boats. I feel like I should know this. I don't, but I tell you what, I'll look it up. And if online people beat me, it's more power to them. So keep in mind, next week, Nick, we need to move this light. Oh, is it doing the thing? Yeah. Yeah. Does the thing. It's so, reeking. This is the Sour Blueberry Mango from Edmunds Oast, which is an American sour ale brewed with, go figure, blueberries and mango. It, it might hail from nautical language, but an oast, Josh, is a kiln used for drying hops. Okay. Fair enough. So I'm glad you asked. I learned something. It just sounds like something very shippy. And it's from Charleston, right? Yeah, which also which could, could make sense for why it would sell, sound shippy, not the other begin begins the same way, but in the center it's different. And ends yeah, the same way. I guess the better term would be nautical. Yeah, yeah, but I prefer shippy. Ship. So I, my grandfather could probably agree. He was in the navy. In the navy in World War One. He, <laughs> he said the thing was a total shipwreck. <laughs> Let's hope not his. Um, so we're doing the Edmunds Oast. You asked how my family got to this country, right? <laughs> swimming. <laughs> the long swim. <laughs> Just ran in the family swimming. He was in the Dutch Navy and. Yeah. He had to swim halfway. Ro- Royal Admiral Art. Yeah. <clears throat> I, his story, I don't know. He he was born in 1890s. That's like a whole nother... I can't even imagine. A century. Like avian bird flu. The man like came home from war and had to do with avian bird flu. Isn't avian and bird the same thing? Yeah, I guess they just called it the avian Spanish flu back then. Yeah. Um, also, flu. isn't that we, really before everyone had like electric lights and indoor plumbing? Yeah, I think standard oil was a hot commodity around then. Re- refrigeration wasn't really a thing. No, they had it on some of the rail cars, but not everybody had it in their home. Like, okay. ma- imagine a life without electricity, refrigeration, and toilets. I could right, deal with that so... in the country. It's when you move me to the city where I might have a problem with that. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so away from the history lesson <laughs> or discussion and... Back to the beer. We have Edmund's Oast, like Josh said. It's the sour blueberry mango. 
Uh, it is nice a color. nice little sour, 6.5% ABV, 16-ounce can, and 5.25 uh, for a 16-ouncer. I'm hoping this is as good as I think, and um, I can go, hey, Brittany, you'll, you'll love this, and na 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 boo boo that you're not having it tonight. She'll finish up those CDLs and need something else for Pound her summer supply. I'm not going to lie. I did have one of these the other day, and I was really pleasantly surprised with the way it turned out. Um, I've had... A fair amount of beers from these guys. This is pleasurable because you used to you weren't able to get them in North Carolina. And when I did a lot of my work for draft beer and stuff in South Carolina, I'd always scoop them up every time I saw them because I knew they were good. And they did some really crazy stuff with sours. So I like the the nose on it's really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. It smells like a blueberry and a mango it's, with that like sour lactic kind of and citrus it's very true that, to the fruit um, but yeah there's no doubt about what is in this glass like i know this is a sour ale it's kind of got like that v8 splash type oh the color is so it looks like, like your two, shirt oh, yeah, yeah well yeah, yeah kinda, <laughs> but uh but remember you know v8 splash how it's n- normally like two or three different uh fruits and vegetables blended and they always have that little cloudy v8 splash yeah mm-hmm mm. I used to drink a lot of with, that stuff. With your vodka? No, just straight oh, okay. up. Just yeah. checking. There was a, I drank a lot of those. Those were good. I was convinced that one of those was a breakfast, and then I found out that they do, do still use a lot of carrot juice in those. Mm-hmm. Not, not my favorite. For, not good for not, Nick? No, nah, Nick does not. Yeah. Oh. Not a carrot fan. Yeah, I knew my uh, ex-fiance was trying to... Uh, Kill you? When she baked me carrot cake, yeah. To, oh Good wow! For her to be ex. Oh god, carrot cake. That's like all. Good. That's like the trio of like <laughs> Nick can't have. I, I packed the truck the next day. Yeah, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a good thing uh, you survive. Got a good back. night's sleep though. Yeah. <laughs> good god. <laughs> so, um, dude, I'm I'm digging this beer. We bear all um, the <laughs> flavor. I really like the flavor on this because. You get the mango, you get the blueberry. I get a lot of the blueberry on the finish, and then it all, it like, every time I take a sip, it alternates between blueberry and mango, and it like just kind of oscillates. I really, I, back, I get both fruits. I'll take for sure. Back. Brittany doesn't like this. She doesn't like sours. It's, she may not, we, uh, she doesn't like this. Is it the end for how, you know, they may be spoken for by the time she makes it down. It's tasty. Oh, yeah. No, this is, and it's not sweet. So uh, the host had another beer on her shelf. Uh, breakfast for dinner is this what you wash down breakfast for dinner with oh but the breakfast for dinner is a confusing can because it's a, it has it's a confusing oats beer. on the front of it as the label which just goes to make it more confusing okay you thank you for clearing that up i was like at yeah, least yeah. i know which one to put in which rack it's like edmund's oats by edmund's oast we'll see who messes that up in the uh <laughs> But yeah. that—that's all. I almost pulled that one for tonight, but I decided to go with this one because I had a feeling that we might have had less experience with this one. I agree. Together. This is the first time I've had this. Um, I, uh, ooh, that's I actually a good one. was waiting for it to get cooler, and it just showed up like late yesterday, I think. Yeah, I decided to. I might have put it in there this morning. Um, and uh, yeah, yesterday in, in this fact, morning. The breakfast uh, for dinner was the first time I saw it yesterday in the cooler. So. Or no, I put it in the cooler the day before, and yesterday I had a chance to, to cool down. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, thanks for working the cooler jockey spot there, Rob. That's very important. Well, yeah, it needs to be done, and you know, if you guys are busy, then I might as well do it, right? Warm yeah, I, beer is still beer, but I do prefer cold beer. I had some that I got really close to the cooler before I got busy today, so that was a, that was a nice pickup. It was it was a good start. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can't I, this. It's really good. Wow. Um, I, I'm, you know, guys, I wasn't always a sour fan, uh, but as, well, if I scratch that, I liked some old sours from the beginning. I just wasn't convinced about the American sour craze and the whole, like, oh, everybody's drinking Goza now. I was like, come on. Uh, but, guys, these are the sour beers that keep me in this category, like, keep and coming back. Apparently, Edmund's Oast does a bunch of sour. Yeah, what was the one that came out where all their like sours were like super aggressive? I think like I don't was it Duclaw? I don't think it was Duclaw, but it was like a one. It like started with the D or something, but they were like all like super sour. Oh 
my God, that dude called that. We're talking like five or six years ago when these guys came out. And um, I feel like that started a trend towards like really aggressive American Sours. Because they were really popular. But I I like this because it's not aggressively sour. It's like just sour enough. I guess like to me, this also shows just the power of the experimentation, the learning. um, Is, oh, hey, if we brew this sour ale, no fruit or nothing... Um, this yeast, what does this remind you of, guys? You know, what is that? Oh, that's like mangoes and blueberries. So then, okay, let's remake this beer and do it with mangoes and blueberries. So I just figured out who's going to like this. So, uh, girls, if you're looking to meet a guy, uh, take a can of this to State Employees Credit Union Southport and give it to a guy named Joe. <laughs> Christina he's, will be your best friend. He's going to. He will absolutely love this. Actually, get yeah, Joe would. Joe would. Love yeah, this. He, he does like the sour <laughs> beers. Sorry about clapping in everyone's face there. It's oh yeah, just really funny stuff. <laughs> also, shout out to Joe. I know yeah, you're Joe's not watching, a, but we're Joe's a regular in the you. shop. You'll see his name on the big board up here. Uh, who does on tap? You know, I do. I need yeah. to register my beers while we're playing tonight because uh, apparently people liked that before. <laughs> so don't mind me. I'm. I'm. That's actually if it, like why is the guy on his phone in the middle of the show? Because uh, I'm going to Untapped and I'm going to log in my beer. So, yeah. um, but I, uh, with this new Guys, phone, I, I dug that. Man. I can apparently talk and use my phone at the same time. I don't know how many of you can handle that. No, that's dangerous, especially when you're driving. To talk and use your phone at the same time. I know. As driving, absolutely. <laughs> it um, used to be all you could do with the thing. Now it's like the hardest thing to do. <laughs> um. <laughs> So I I really dug that a lot. You guys remember all of the crazy knockoff like hands free phone kits from back in the day when like cell phones first came out? Sorry, nostalgia wow. was creeping Rob, up. Rob's already. <laughs> Rob, Rob's like trying. You can't eat the glass. <laughs> <laughs> that that was that was like the signal. From way back when, it's ready to move on to the second beer. <laughs> that uh, that was a really cool beer, though. Yeah, I dug it, dug it, dug it. Oh man, I knew it was coming. I wonder how many of the current viewers re- remember any of the episodes with uh, Christina in them. Uh, just thought I'd ask. She's getting ready to download oh. here in a little bit. Yeah, that that uh, Ugh. the new software update is in and. The downloads are ready, huh? Ooh, that's yeah. a good one. Ooh. Jack. Yeah, we're pretty excited about that. That's great news. Wishing everybody the best. In the I'd say that family. is definitely a 6.4 out of 7. Nice fizz out of there. Sorry I held it low just to get the leverage on that. Um, bottle's got a cool noise. I, I hope you guys heard that. Um, speaking of the bottle, it is a really cool style bottle. Um, with like the three tiered, like kind of nonic style, almost looks like our a reverse of our pint glass or something. Uh, supposedly though, that that lip would help catch uh, sediments. Uh, the way that yeah yeah. Whoa, not the label though. Careful, labels are slippery coming out of the cooler. As God here. is my witness, that was not just my fault. No, it it <laughs> went on. Him. <laughs> I, I gotta say though, Josh did a really good job of uh, securing his glass. Good job, Rob. You checked in first. <laughs> Your plan worked. Hey, but now I have a brandy glass. Yeah, but what I stole from him is the indicia oh, yeah. off the last beer, and <laughs> now he can't check in. <laughs> so, so for everybody who wants to see what the label looks like, <laughs> this is the nice brown bottle it comes in. You can notice it's a little stumpy. It's got the nice little uh, uh, thingy bobby going on here, you know? Uh, the label is white. It says Duvel in uh, red letters. Has a little crown above it. Um, where's it from, Josh? Uh, oh, no. Nick's got that label. Uh, and <laughs> uh, Celebrating since 1871, Duvel beer hails from... Uh, Brower, Browers? Coors? No, Browers or whatever is like the name. Mortgat, Mortgat, Coors, Belgium. Belgium, okay. Uh, Mort, Mort got, oh yeah, Duvel Mort got, oh yeah. So, um, the price on this was also what? 
Uh, nope, that's cider boys. I think it was five. Uh, eight, eight point. What the what? Are you, the the ABV is eight point something. Five five two twenty five price. Uh, ABV is on your label, I believe. Okay. It's an eleven point. Uh, eight point five. Eight point five. It's I'm a, glad we have two. It's a three hundred milliliter. <laughs> this is going interesting. So that's going to be like eleven point <laughs> nine ounce, I think. Eleven point two. Eleven point two. Yeah, standard European bottle size. So this uh, is a Belgian blonde, correct? Belgian yes. strong gold. Okay. Oh, is that what it says there? Belgian golden L. Okay. Cool. Really cool style of beer. One of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> is, is our producer standing behind us? Yeah. Is that what you're laughing at? We, I told him to come on in the studio, and he was a little reluctant. Yeah, our producer is definitely he's a, he's a little camera the, shy behind the camera guy. He's got a oh, see you, man. Bye, producer. He totally just Irish goodbye to us. You could hear the bell. He does it. He does it. Yeah. Uh, he had a beer to drink with us. I told him to just come and sit in off camera chairs and enjoy so, it with us. So this actually. Um, it has your classic blonde Belgian blonde look to it. I mean, I mean it's, it's super okay. pale and, and it's clear. Other than my glasses, got some of the uh, colloidal left over from the smell. Smell is it smells beery, bready cereal, but there's this sweetness that mm-hmm. just really carries that tells sweetness. me, hey, this and, is and Belgian. There is definitely a yeasty note. Um, yeah. It's Belgian beer. You're gonna get that yeast. Yeah, it, there's like it's basically like really like fresh baked bread with like confectionery sugar on top they, instead of powdered sugar. They really sugar. leaned into the holy spirit side of the Rheinheinz you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, they do trust that uh, a lot of Belgian beers, even the modern ones we see, were captured from live yeast <sighs> cultures. Ah. Uh. Oh, I just like this. This is a beer beer. I gotta say, hey, th- there's nothing. I've had the Duvel, the dark label, and it almost just came off so boozy and sweet. That's the strong. Is, is there a? Is that the blue? I one? didn't. I didn't even know it's that like they a made. I don't even. Does Duvel even make different kinds? I, I think they have a, a blue label that's. That I might think, be like high end. That yeah. might be like Roquefort or something. That, it, um, it's like a, we get a, um, you can get one of our high end buyers bought a case and it was like three hundred bucks for a case of twelve. I have a look at uh, the problem with Belgian beers is some of them do that, some of them don't. A lot of them are like a specific name and a style, yeah. but they're brewed by the same brewer. It, it's so weird yeah. trying to keep track of them all over there because they all honestly all the labels look the same too. This thing you have popped to, a belch out of me, right? But I, I actually you gotta like color code it, guys. I was a little nervous of this. I thought. In my memory, this style beer wasn't always my favorite. It was a little too sweet for me. I am not getting too sweet. I with will the say Duvel. I think we could have done this before the sour. I'm get, I'm still having a little bit sour linger. Okay. Well, hey, that's what your palate cleanser is for. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly right there. Well, the reason why I did those one after the sour is because, like, with your second and third sip, the sugar and the booze are really going to take over with this one. Because the Belgians are strong sweet beers they put so much candy sugar which is not like actual candy but it's like beet sugar in like these big huge chunks just to get the abv up and maintain a super light body they do it from sugar beets yeah they don't use a huh no beet sugar is like instead of imported well in europe most of what they'll use is beet sugar well that's what they used to use in this country actually before king sugar yeah sugar cane it's cheaper to use sugar cane in the here. Midwest. That's what people grew up on. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it was it wasn't until like uh, Bet the de East Indies or whatever. Yeah, that absolutely. Yeah, that they got a lot of sugar cane coming from there. Yeah, yeah. The it's Caribbean. just beet sugar is something everyone can make, and beets are naturally sweet. They're not as sweet as sugar cane. You get a higher yield product, and, sugar cane. And weren't they able to start growing some sugar cane in like Louisiana and, and yep. Florida along the coast? Yep. Yep. Sugar Baron's got that hold. That's actually that's why the Boo Streets, you know, that's kind of part of why Bourbon, Bourbon Street, Street downtown yeah. in New Orleans. Even though the other reason is, of course, the uh, exporting of the bourbon product would go down through the rivers and leave through New Orleans. But hey, if we can build a distillery at the mouth of the shipping, can we cut off that other product and call it, I don't know, uh, like Southern Comfort? Or Grand Marnier. Or no, Grand, Grand Marnier is yeah. French. <clears throat> Louisiana's French. Kind of. Southern Comfort, though, is like a sh- sugar cane 
whiskey. Like, Southern Comfort is evil. Yeah. So, and Southern Comfort is a liqueur, not a whiskey. Well, that's part of... Thank you, Rob, for clearing that up. Because to, to clarify Rob's statement, it's a whiskey-based liqueur. <laughs> I, or you could have just said it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like whiskey made from sugar, but it's cool. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's talk about beer and wine because yeah, that's what we you know, do here. Um, I must have really dug this thing, just like I did the one before. Because, damn, I, I'm gone. really loving the um, carbonation on this. Mm. Got these small little bubbles, really just tight. And I think the carbonation is part of what keeps that dry flavor. It is going. bottle conditioned too. So there is yeast sediment at the bottom of it all. Yeah, that's what I was enjoying. It on yeah, you have the sip. who I got the last pour. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. My last sip was really. I'm kind of even tempted just to see what all come out after the last pour. Oh, I didn't realize that was in there. That's that's God share. So why is it Nick's made class? by God for God? <laughs> why is it Nick's class? <laughs> Rob, you've Don't. seen Ghostbusters. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When um, asked if you're a um, god, you say yes. yes. <laughs> that's, about, that's about as much as I can hum the Ghostbusters song. Yeah, I mean, there's some stuff down there. Oh, and it really, Dude, it I'll, really packs that coriander I'll, kind of I'll, smell. I'll tell you, like when Dad and I were doing our home brewing thing, we brewed. This is like you guys did a Belgian strong gold. I we did a lot of these. You and landed the right around eight six on that one too. Uh, well, one in particular uh, uh, that ooh, I actually remember. Ooh, that's a good one. Mine, Drinking straight from the like hopper. If I, uh, <laughs> mine, mine have felt forced tonight. Yeah. I can't get, I can't get a good one. There's nothing forced about that. I had Nick <laughs> just went off the Richter I, I scale. Think, I think Nick is uh, pulling mine. And <clears> I love Belgians just because they're so light, easy drinking. This, and the other thing is 8.5% and it goes down that smooth. These things can get you into trouble. The guys told me not to hold back tonight. They, so... Uh, it's full throttle office. Are either of you uh, thirsty for a little wine? <laughs> um, um, I could, I could, I could do a spot of wine. In. I saw some newbies in here Nick, drinking Nick, wine Nick's today. Nick's got longer arms than and, me. And uh, I very quickly steered them to the bottle room. And I'm telling you what, these ladies were well-footed in the bottle room. They showed, came back up with a Tempranillo. And uh, um, they snagged that uh, Bergen's Albarino. Sorry, everyone. That's, that's gone. But I tell you what. What they missed was that Panonica that came in, and Jess grabbed one of those. Pretty excited to see that label back in. Uh, uh, it's a nice Austrian white blend. Got that Rob's one of Rob's favorite uh, Gruner Veltliner in there. I like me some Gruner. I, yeah. I picked up a bottle to take home myself. Yeah. So there you go, guys. I don't have to wake up early tomorrow, so it's I wild. do. Yeah, yeah. But just me. Have fun. We've all been there. However, who am I? Who, who who do I work with for tomorrow? Ashley. Oh, really? Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're fine. Are you sure? Yeah, one of you are. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> Rob, if you if you get a call around nine a.m. that you just have to come spray the two of us down with a hose because we're like out front wrestling, just <laughs> All right. make sure to put it on cold because that thing comes out so, hot. So I'm trying to realize <laughs> the, the light in here is. Uh, <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is the Matthew Fritz Pinot Noir from uh, uh, the Sonoma Coast, 2019. All right, so first thing, <laughs> this is Sonoma Coast. This is not. Cheers, uh, Ash. Sonoma County. Uh, difference being, it's a larger area. They can pull grapes from all over the area. It's not just from the uh, one AVA. You know, you. Th- I think you just helped me interpret what some of the reps have been saying and why. Yeah, so if, if the wine has a specific AVA on it, especially in American AVAs, which is what AVA stands for, American Viticultural Area, um, it's a confined area. And AVAs are typically done towards river valleys, is uh, often or political designations. N- no, it's really more the farmers who want to have their specific area. Uh-huh. So it may be a, vi- a valley, it may be uh-huh. higher in the mountains, it may be, but it's the group of farmers get together and say, "This is what we want this area to be known as." And if they put their case forward and make a good enough case, then the powers that be will say, okay. And so Sonoma has maybe uh, a little bit of coast, but... But Sonoma County is the AVA. Uh Sonoma Coast is, 
obviously going to have snow in it, but outside that area. I'm, as I'm well. thinking that does me one thing. Just thinking about topographically and geographically, and I'll pass back to Rob. Is you go over the coastal range, you're outside of the Sonoma River Valley, and you're now like looking down the coast. How do we include that in a similar AVA? And I think this is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, and and don't get that confused as far as an AVA. Uh huh. So, um, uh, so and you know, and they can have some where it's. I'm thinking a lot more water. It could be not a dry valley. It could be also some areas could be a smaller area inside a, a larger AVA. Yes. Um, so could be Sonoma Coast, could be inside that Sonoma County AVA. I'm not entirely sure. But it's either de- delineating either inside or the whole area around it. So there is a lot of litigation. There is a lot of paperwork that goes into all of it. And sometimes they just get to the point where it's like, do we really want to do this or do we just want to stop at this level? Well, and, and establishing an AVA can take decades. Yeah. Um, there was one, was it Horse Heaven Hills? Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, we've got a Merlot that's named H3, Horse Heaven Hills. Yeah, okay. Um, and that is a smaller AVA designation inside a larger, which I believe is the Columbia River AVA. Mm-hmm. And Horse Heaven Hills kind of sits above, Ooh. but it's surrounded by the Columbia River AVA. Maybe I'm just belchy tonight, guys. What is it, like Euphrata? No. Well, I mean, it, it just sits higher elevation than the rest of the Did the they just name a city on the Columbia Irrigation Project? Oh, my God. Yes. All right. All right so, to the wine. We did a little wine, AVA It's no talk Okanagua. Here. Matthew Fritz. And we we had somebody who's uh, watching that said... Lisa, she said that's interesting information. Thanks, guys. So yeah, somebody's actually watching and paying attention. We appreciate it. It, it was, or she was just telling us to move on. That that could be true. Point, yeah, um, point achieved. Yeah, Matt Malley's that way. If she's yep, let's move on. Good job. I did like the name of this wine. Uh, I thought Matt. I was like, oh, Matthew Fritz. He sounds like a nice guy. Turns out it's actually two, two nice guys. guys. That's right. <laughs> um, it does sound like it would be like one guy. Yeah, I think they nailed it. This labeling is really fun. I right down to the thick. Uh, build on like the cotton paper got this embossed look it's really fun all right so i will apologize up front to uh, it's josh pinot. i know pinot noir is not his favorite yeah but but i I've even want to try this again for a little bit i do recall in the tasting when we tried this that it said i did not hate this as much as i normally hate pinots and i think you're actually coming around a little bit i think you're uh where i was at the stage of ipa is like two or three years ago, and I'm starting to come around to them. I have an existential problem with Pinot Noir. <laughs> existential. Yeah. Um, but no, I, it does smell like a dinner party. Okay. It's primarily composed of middle-aged management employees. <laughs> and okay, so that would explain the little candy perfume I'm getting on the nose. Is, is this, and wait, the, is this actually a meeting? Where so, where three this, or four of them actually handcrafted the canapes, and the rest of them just went to a higher tier grocery store and picked up the pinwheels. <laughs> like I said, this is explaining why I'm getting the candy perfume of the you know, uh, the, 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 the the women that don't work at the company that were invited for extracurricular activities. It's almost too much. <laughs> I've never been to a party like that, by the way. <laughs> you throw one four days a week. <laughs> we threw one tonight. She took the uh, hummus pinwheel. <laughs> and if you buy hummus and then put it on a plate, but it still comes out of a plastic thing, you didn't make it. Did you make this hummus? Yeah. You made it possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, so I've got salt, garbanzos, lemon. It's the tahini I always have to figure out how to come up with. There is yeah, a great it's, brand. It's, it's called tahini, and you buy it. Yeah, it comes. Yeah, but it's. Yeah. It's always easier to get it, the, the stuff called hummus and the hummus. The tahini jar is the size of the hummus jar, and it costs more. Than the hummus. <laughs> the hummus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. 
makes me wonder how much tahini is in all these commercial grade hummuses. Yeah, I've I've just made a, I've made too much hummus in my life. Okay, so I'm gonna say as far as the wine goes. <laughs> Wow, this wow. Is, we've just been like totally around the world. It, did, the dude, did Ro- I think he just landed a title quote? What was it? I made too much too much hummus. I'll change it. I'll definitely change it from <laughs> Nick is making us so hungry. He's going to tell us what he had. That's a good inside joke. And then the band interrupted me. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but I think. I, I actually, Not to I mention think that I've, I've been so much hummus in my life is is a good. And then me telling Rob to get tahini for three days now. He did. You know what? Yes. I'm starting to realize the more and more we keep talking, we're falling right into Josh's trap. This is literally table talk at like a to mid level keep us from talking about the Pinot Noir. <laughs> like, <laughs> to keep us talking from talking about the Pinot Noir. Well, it's fruity. Uh, so on the nose, yeah, it's definitely like it's like you keep saying candy perfume and then there's some uh blackberries in there for me maybe some blueberries um yeah no i I, the blackberry i get more so than the blueberry Mm -hmm. probably the Um, nose really comes through with like a woody almost like cedar quality that seems to be sticking through it now i'm gonna say if josh likes this wine it's really surprising to me because to me if I recall Josh's preference on Pinot Noirs, he kind of gravitates more towards the French ones, which are drier. Yeah, I think I think Josh's aversion is to those like wild Oregon American Pinots. He'll deal with like a North Coast New Zealand or like a true French Burgundy. So, now let me come out and be straight about that. I do not like this wine. New title. Josh comes out straight. Let me, let me come out straight. <laughs> um, All right, <laughs> but I like it. it. <laughs> I like it more than some of the pinots I've had. I just, I, I, it's I don't know, man. It it's got like this buttery aspect on the palate too. Like not like Chardonnay butter, but just kind of Pinot buttery. If I were like 57 and leaning Pino leaning butter. on retirement, do you think this taste might be a little more appealing? Pino. That right there is the title. <laughs> Pino buttery. It is kind of it does as soon as he said that I kind of got this whole peanut butter jelly thing going on. Uh, there's a jamminess, but then there's like this tannic quality to the yeah. It's just not my favorite style of wine. But I if you gave me a glass of this, I would drink it, which is what I'm doing right now. Stop trying to breathe the wine. No, honestly, I don't. Honestly, think- um, I would say drink, uh, pour and drink with this one. Um, I think it would go great with a nice falafel. <laughs> Josh is on a falafel kick. I just stop him right now. Oxygen. Kick his shin. Not the bad one. <laughs> Kick his other one, so he walks with the limp on both legs. You should see Bill Shin, by the way. He put he put a hatchet in his knee. Really? <laughs> you guys got to learn what you're doing. <laughs> Did he? It was as bad. No, nah, it's it's no, but <laughs> I think he's facing some of what you've been dealing with. Um. So I can't stop thinking every time I take a sip of this of, of grape jelly now. I, honestly, and then Josh brought in the whole. I was like tasting cedar as soon as he said peanut butter jelly. The whole ta- the tannin flipped to like peanut butter skins, like inside Spanish peanuts, like 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 the weird kind of tannic bitter that you get from the skin of a roasted peanut. Yes, yes, specifically sitting there in the third inning at the ballpark and you're dry roast, right? Dry roast, yeah. not the yeah. Or if you pulled a dry roast before they cook all the I don't know how I feel. I really really don't have an opinion on wet roasted peanuts. Well, that's called running out of water during the boil. Or or boiled peanuts. Half-cooked steamed peanuts. I do love boiled peanuts. Boiled peanuts is awesome. Much easier to eat the shell with boiled peanuts, but not as much roughage if if you... Also, here's one of those weird things, guys. Peanut, major allergy for me. For some reason, boiled peanuts don't bother me as bad. 
Probably because as long as you boil him for five and a half hours, <laughs> you probably denatured everything that you. And were not, how much to. salt did you guys put in yours? Because we used to do them in like a bio cooker, so, and you use like a so whole I can, I can pot bag. Like this, yeah. And before I put water in it, I just put a pound box of salt in the bottom. Of it. Yeah. If yeah. you have to ask yourself if you need to put more salt in there, you probably should. Of course, you guys, I he, I know he made by Port City. We kind of reined in on the whole boiled peanuts thing. <laughs> it was pretty crazy up there. No, oh, yeah. Uh, no, but this is actually, uh, what's the price point on this guy? One five. So for a wow. $15 bottle of Pinot, well. um, everyone on the show knows that I'm just not a Pinot drinker. But I can tell by if I like or dislike it if you're gonna like it you know if you had you'll petaluma, probably like this if you had the petaluma gap the uh sorry to intrude there oh you're good um low gap low gap um it wasn't listed as uh um sonoma or anything like that uh we have the um oh rob help me here the casa pinot noir okay i think if you like tasted that and you're like what more can i get out of a cali pinot this is definitely a great direction to go. I uh, think a little finer crafting. Uh, both have beautiful labels. Great presentation. Um, that Casa was a little more like wild and dry. Like uh, some, I don't know. Just didn't have this big fruit quite the way that this one has. Which to me, and if correct me if I'm wrong, but that's more where you gravitate towards if, if, if you're going to like a Pinot. Is it's the drier, less fruit type stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it is an anomaly to me that I don't hate this. Um, but I guess it's like, honestly, like Nick's saying, like the crafting of it. I yeah. mean, it's a well-crafted yeah. wine. And I can appreciate the balance and everything. I appreciate the heck out of this wine. I wouldn't buy it for myself, but would I buy it, take it to a party where I know people would like Pinot? You know, absolutely. So if you're at a dinner party. For, with middle management. And you have a choice between this and... Barefoot Pinot Grigio. I'd go uh, with this, man, because we're middle management. We deserve a little bit better than Barefoot. <laughs> so you think? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll be I'll be drinking Pinot Grigio if with the waitresses. Going, if you're going to the dinner party, you kind of like have to halfway show off a bit, showing up with stuff. So you have to drink like this. That's why you can't bring the hummus in the jar. You have to put it on a plate and make it look pretty before you bring it. It's so that extra bit of effort that got you into the position you are at your job. See, Rob, all that hard work paid off for you. For me? Oh, I, I misunderstood that last one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I think we're ready to circle back around and do some ratings. I think so. Yeah. All right. I think, I think I could piece it back together. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start off with Evans Oast, the sour blueberry, blueberry mango. mango. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this one two thumbs up. It's a really good sour. I have nothing bad to say about this at all. <laughs> it's just good. The the blueberry and the... You get everything that's advertised on the can. You get the sour, you get the blueberry, you get the mango. You get it, it's in the color, it's in the smell, it's in the taste. It's not too sour. It's not too blueberry. It's not too mango. It's a perfect blend of flavors. Yep. It's well done. Uh, what was the price point on this guy? Five twenty-five. Five. Uh, solid price to pay for a decent sour in a sixteen-ounce can. Sours tend to get a little bit pricier than other beers just because of like how long it takes to make them and the process. It's good. Two thumbs. What about you, Nick? I I have um, I have a reservation towards granting like a, just this sour the two thumbs. But man, if he's not just pushing me, I would say in category for me, two thumbs up. Uh, am I is Nick gonna put sour as his favorite beer ever? So I gotta I gotta pull back. My overall is like a one eight. Oh, cool. um, but That's... the crafting, the the taste, the label, uh, just really cool just gets your brain thinking and uh i love southern states putting beer out there that is top shelf beer um 
I say new to the South, but you know, ten years down here, man, I'm really loving our beer. Like, <laughs> no, you made it ten years. You're not new. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, anything else? It's the first time he didn't call me a Yankee. <laughs> well, I thought well. I was just assumed. Um, <laughs> that Yankee moved here, <laughs> but he's not new. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else there? Uh, that, I'm, I'm good with that on the Oast. All right. So, I'm going to go with Josh. Two thumbs up. Yeah, good um, job, boys. Solid yeah. sour. I'm gonna say if you are trying to venture into trying sours, this is the sour for you. Yeah, this is a great starting point. Uh, not only just because it's not super sour, but it's got everything. On, like Josh said, everything that's listed on the can is there and easily, uh, you know, picked out of the of the taste. Um, but. At the same time, as good as this is for an entry level, I think this is an excellent sour in of itself in the category. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, two O in category for yeah, sure. I mean, it, it's very and it's six five. Yep. Which is for a sour is is relatively like, high. Relatively like, high. I mean, I mean, might be why I like it. I yeah. mean, yeah, it was, we had an imperial what a couple weeks ago that was an eight O, but that that was an imperial Berliner Weiss. Oh no, that was nine two. Okay. Yeah. Um, which we were very, you know, like that is way high for, for there's sour. a reason we don't have more of it. That's true. <laughs> yeah. We're almost out of that one. Yeah. That one. Um, we are out of it. Through. Hey Siri, shut up. I didn't call you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Calling. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going, I'm going to go oh, man. 2-0 on this. I think Edmund's Oast knocked it out of the park. Absolutely, uh, it, five twenty-five is an excellent price for for a sour of this quality. Yeah, good. Um, so the next one up we had was the Duvel. I don't have a bottle to show I you. Got, Nick I, t- I, stole it back. I, yeah, there's a bottle right here. Plus, they yanked the label off, and I think Which, Josh is trying to show home brewers. Thing. We're trying to tell you something. These yeah. bottles, all you got to do is just soak these labels off, and you got some great homebrew bottles. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've used plenty of them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you can also tell they don't put these in a cooler and take it to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, if they do, they just, you know, wading through the labels as they're reaching down to the ice. <laughs> what beer did we have? I don't know. See what labels are yeah, floating around. Yeah, floating. That's how you tell if you're drunk is if you start slapping, like, wet labels on people. Because <laughs> you found one in the cooler. <laughs> yeah, and if you get away with one each on, on the, the local females. Some label pasties. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right, back, back, back to the ratings. Uh, Nick, was that a tangent I heard Rob going on? Nick, uh, yeah, that was definitely a tangent. Uh, Nick, um, how about uh, you taking us back to ratings? Sure, I can beer. round this out for you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, but to draw it to a point, the um, the Duvel is a Belgian golden, really appreciated this. Uh, ripping up like a eight six alcohol level. It's a eleven, uh, two bottles. It's a three hundred mil. So that's a European style. Um, it's just super great format. Classic taste. Um, true to form Belgian golden beer. Um, there are sweeter. There are hoppier. There are different takes on this taste. But the this one, guys, is like the right down the middle. This is th- this is the arrow through the apple for me as far as Belgian beer. Um, so I'm going to throw in a 175. Uh, this is excellent beer. Um, the fine line between import and craft, and maybe it is really a craft import. Yeah. Um, so thanks a lot, Belgian, and thanks, Duvel. I like it, 175. All right, Josh? Uh, Duvel, for me, I've had so much of this beer in my life. I'm going to give it a solid 1.9. Good. Did I catch a niner in there? Yeah. Um, it is not my absolute favorite go-to, like, Belgian Strong Golden, but it's really good. Um, I really like this beer a lot. It's light, deceivably easy drinking. Dad, I saw that comment where you said, do you see my comment? Just letting you know. I, <laughs> Dad, I heard Rob talking I, I, about I, your comment. Dad, Dad's so. been trying to figure out how to comment. So, I, yes, Dad, you just commented. Bob, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> See you on Friday, Bob. 
And Lisa <laughs> even saw it. Um, no, but the, the, I mean, it, it's a absolute representation of the style. Um, it it's been around for a long time. It's not going to go anywhere. That's true. Um, it's a good beer. The bottles also oh, t- three thumbs up for the home brewing aspect because <laughs> I have plenty of them that I used to use for home brewing. All right. There's a special place in any home brewer's heart for labels that wash off the of bottles easily. Easily. <laughs> Thank you, Dogfish Head. It's an extra point. So um, the but they embossed their stupid crest on it. Well. <laughs> so so for me, I'm going to go with Nick on this one, the 175. Um, I think Duvel is a great representation of the style. Uh, classic Belgian, uh, either blonde or golden or, you know, whatever of those styles that they want to get nitty, nitty gritty on, you know, uh, nitpicky, whatever. I don't think there's much difference between a golden and a, and a blonde. Am there, uh, there a is, there gold. is a no. There's a gold significant strong. difference in Belgium. Significant, yeah. Yeah, uh, blondes are not going to be as strong. Okay, uh, and also even lighter in color, mm-hmm. um, but, which might be sometimes some weak. But is it just because of aging time, or it's literally the brewing process, um, possibly the yeast strain. Okay. Um, typically, golds will have more candy sugar. Okay, could also deal with the color of the candy sugar because just like there's light sugar and sure. dark sugar when okay. you see a then you'll see a double a belgian double which is like usually or slightly stronger and, and then yeah, a triple is basically like somewhere between one, once you get and double strong. and triple you're getting into abby L's, yeah. yeah um which is also a separate style of belgian brewing that's but, right. so that's why josh and i talk about belgian strongs as actually like a very like a, but, I, but uh, i'm gonna Bel- say a at, strong strong golden belgian blonde all that stuff are secular as as far as a Belgian style, overall style, mm-hmm. I think this fits in as a very nice representation. Oh, I, I um, mean, it, are, it is yeah. it is probably um, uh, by secular. Yeah, you Gene, mean we're, we're brewed be, outside of the church. Uh, cutting off here in just right? a few minutes, so we can get to those uh, finals as well. You do know what Duvel means, right? Did Gene just yell at us for going on too long? Gene Morgan just said, "Have a great night, guys. Uh, time for." B-ball finals. Oh, Gene. Rock it out. Hey, um, throw on uh, some... Uh, He's already gone. Damn. So, um, to my rating... I I'm, was waiting for Columbus. There. I'm going to go with 175 with Nick. Uh, I think it's a great representation of a Belgian style. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that... I, I really dig the fact that it's a beer beer. There's nothing over the top on it. There's... No super hoppiness. There's no flavored sour. There's mm. no this. There's no that. It is just it's balanced beer, and it'll do the also, job. Also, if you want to go on a little rabbit hole, look into the secular Belgian strong golds, which tend to reflect doubles, triples, and abiels. All of them have relatively evil names. Yeah, but think about it. They're secular. Duvel means devil. They're not okay. brewed inside the church. Like I thought about what Josh was really telling me. They're not the blessed ales. Another so, another good one is Lucifer. That means they can even use different ingredients. I mean, so classically, one seven five on my rating for Duvel. Also, why they were held outside the Reinholds? Because it's not Germany, but um, Belgium. So our Pinot Noir, our wine night was a Pinot Noir, Matthew Fritz. Uh, from Sonoma Coast, 2019, $15 a bottle. I'm going to start off with this one as a 1.45. Not quite 1.5. Um, I think it's solid in class. I think as a $15 bottle, it's a good uh, entry level. Um, after tasting it again here, um, I think that... Uh, uh, it has a lot difference when you're tasting it when it's first open versus oh, when it's been open that's right. for open and pour. three or four hours. This this one needs to be uh, drank right away. Decant the whole bottle and just pour I would, it I out. wouldn't even decant it. You wouldn't? Just just pour it. I, I, that, I echo that just on when I... Um, when we had it, when we tasted it, we tasted it later in the afternoon. I'm, you know, it had been open for several hours, so the tannins had time to really set in there which i think 
is what I caught on to that I thought you liked it. Um, it was a drier Pinot Noir after a couple hours. I don't like this as much as the taste I had. I, I, I think I, I tend to agree. Um, I, I go I go more tannic based um, for my my reds as well. I, that's why I like strong Spanish reds. Um, mm. I like the tannins. Um, Some Spanish red drinkers would love this. Possibly. Mm. They might be disappointed with the tannins, but I think they'd like that fruit. Um, but I'm going to go mm. one four five just because it's solid mm. um, as an entry level mm. Pinot Noir for us. <laughs> um, I think. Uh, there, there's nothing, there's nothing really negative other than it's not huge in tannins, or not, and I don't want to say huge in tannins. I, it's not, the tannin, the tannins aspect doesn't come out stronger than what it, what it does. I think it would show better if you let it sit open and uh, oxidize a little bit and, and pull in some more tannins. Yeah. Which it showed better in the afternoon for us when we tried it. Yes. So you know, one, four, five. That's interesting. Uh, I'm going to not echo, but reverberate. Okay. Rob brought up a really cool point here, which is about um, the difference of the fruit versus the tannins. And I'm really enjoying the fruit, Mm -hmm. getting into the tannins. When I aerated that sip earlier in the show, it was really rough on me. It came, it started like, I started like orange and just like rusty kind of oxidized thinking. And um, different tones came out of this wine that some wine drinkers may really love. Okay, I'm just going to throw that out there. But for me, what I really found nice about this was you pop this bottle open, you pour this glass, and immediately available is some fruit next to like this tannic bite that gives you a little bit of that star anise, but doesn't hang out there. It comes right back to that fruit. It's refreshing. So if you had food or a mid-level management meeting to pay attention to, you could pay attention to both of those at the same time and still be able to talk. Yeah, but I don't want to, throughout the meeting, be slurping the wine to aerate it. So that's why you know it's a Cali Pinot Noir. It has this chewy fruit thing to it. Because I agree with you, the tannins do show up more when you aerate it. I'd say if you're going to drink it during a meeting, I'd say 8 a.m. in a coffee cup. Coffee cup, cup, crimson cup, during preferably. Your, di- during your Zoom meeting. Now we know what's the crimson cup. Don't slurp it. Just just slug why, it. Why you're not just, wearing any pants. Yeah, slug it down like it's but black But make sure coffee. you get the angle or the yoga pants. Right. Yeah, because cameras have a lot more peripheral vision than you expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, this guy's this guy's oh by the way i'm gonna say price point for me that was a positive review too i don't know if you guys caught that and i don't uh, even know that we got your rating. i know that's right price point equals my thumb point this thing's what how much one one uh one five that's 15. right guess what my rating is one five one five okay um i'm probably gonna go a little bit below rob on this one uh one four and um, which is higher and i'm not even giving a caveat like i normally do with pinot noirs yeah that's true um, a pinot noir caveat bleep, yeah. bleep. no i for the price point and the flavor profile it's exactly what a lot of people want with a pinot noir um i hate this less than most pinot noirs if you brought this over like hey i brought a bottle of wine i'm not going to actively like hold my fingers up and like get out of here you demon um, How'd you get past the doorman? It's like I had salt on the floor. Jesus. Um, no, uh, I would still drink it. So one four for me. Price point can't hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Next time you go to a dinner party, if you know somebody wants Pinot Noir, just bring it. Somebody's gonna drink it. It, it it's. I mean, it's a very approachable and, wine. And chances are, not only they're going to drink it, but there's going to be a couple there that are really going to like it. And they're going to talk to you about where you got it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and then you can seem even more important than you wanted to feel. Right. That's right. Um, so, like, it's a win-win situation. All right. Sounds good. I like feeling important. Yeah. That, did you? Did you just see it? I just did it. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Um, we do have the uh, uh, basketball <laughs> final starting here. Um, I'll get home in time. They're for starting time. this late. Well, we gotta go watch. Oh, it's oh, championship game. Man. Yeah, that's how it goes. And on top of that, it's two West Coast teams. So there were pr- well, the further furthest East Coast team in the uh, final four was Houston. <laughs> so um, anyway. 
Uh, we're going to wrap it up. I think Josh has a couple things to say to us. Absolutely. If you are checking us out on YouTube, please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe below the video. If you don't tell us what you think or how you feel, we'll never know how you like how much you laughed at our comment about a middle management dinner party. Um, are you in middle management? Have you been to a party like that? Please tell us. I know they exist. I've been to them. You're welcome. I've been to more than one of them. <laughs> you guys have been to one of my house. Not that kind of that. That was a slightly different kind of middle management. Yeah, hey, I, I, I'm going to tell a joke. No, you can't talk to them. You got to tell that joke to those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it absolutely. Please do remember to like, comment, subscribe, share what you feel and think with us, and then we will have more stuff to maybe talk about, or we might ignore you. You never know. It's like the lottery. We might just thumbs down your comment. Who knows? <laughs> Chances are, because you commented, we're going to thumbs up it. Just because you commented. Absolutely. It's I mean, like that fish dinner at the mid-level management meeting. We just might ignore it. We are... Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. We're cool with infamy. Any, any attention is good attention. All right. So, um, just going to say, uh, it was fun yeah. this week. Uh, we will see you again next week. And uh, have a nice one. Later.